Next question. Boy, Todd goes right to the hard one. Okay, well, so for the 40th uh, uh, anniversary edition, I said you're just going to, uh, you know, plug the fiber optic jack right into the side and have the AI write it for me. Yeah, um, I would actually have to go back and see what the what we thought the biggest change was. I think it was probably a a kind of a confluence of several things of items that we had to fight really hard for back in the day to get adopted, like unit testing, right? That was a hard sell. People did not want to do it. Some people still don't, but at least they know what you're talking about now. At least they feel guilty about not doing it. So that's, <laughs> that's progress, that's progress. Um, but a lot of that stuff has become far more accepted. You know, you said pair programming before, and they're like, Kami, we're not doing that. You know, they'd have some kind of reaction and now you know they've got mob programming which is you know even that but but even greater and they're reporting good good success with that so okay yeah we've made some progress there um, the whole idea of having your build pipeline and your repo hosted in the cloud um, that's pretty brilliant and empowering um, you know not having to maintain that server over in the corner and there the, I don't know if this is in one of the editions of the book or I've just told it forever but there was this developer I knew, Lucky Pierre. That was really his name. Uh, he decided that this particular search algorithm wasn't running fast enough on this piece of hardware. This was running OS2 back in the day. So he went in and rewrote the process scheduler in the kernel on OS2 to tweak it. OK, bold move, but all right. We'll, we'll give it to And it worked great. And you know they got the performance increase that they wanted, and that was wonderful. Tiny problem. It never worked anywhere else in the world other than his machine, literally. So I'm thinking this was some kind of like cosmic ray quantum effect kind of, of something because they got the same gear from the same manufacturer, loaded the same software stack on it, faced it in the same direction, you know, what? <laughs> Nothing. It was the, the most extreme case of works on my machine. Um, <laughs> And didn't. And that is, you know, you laugh, right? But that's Docker, right? Docker is institutionalizing. It works on my machine. Ship the my machine. Um, so those were probably the, the, the biggest changes. Um, the biggest changes going forward, whew, my crystal ball's in the shop. But um, it is a hard one because, you know, a lot of folks are like, oh, AI, AI, AI. No, first of all, it's not AI. Okay. If you're talking to VC, venture capitalists, it's AI. If you're trying to recruit people for the team, recruiting talent, right, it's machine learning. You're sitting there doing it, it's linear regression. That's all it is. Um, anyone who's worried, and, and this, is, you know, this is something that gets some ink. It says, oh, AI is going to take our jobs and steal our future. Um, you ever use the self-checkout at the grocery store? <laughs> I don't think, I, we don't have much to worry about yet. I think, we're, I think we're okay there. So I don't think, you know, if we get some assists via machine learning and related technologies, you know, something that will help us as we're coding, great, you know. Love it. It's, it's like autocomplete on steroids. Okay, dynamite. It's not going to write code for us. Um, I would like to see us continue to sort of move up in the world and deal less with lower and lower level concerns. Um, one of the first computers I ever bought, the salesman at the store cracked open the floppy drive, the 8-inch floppy drive, and checked it out on an oscilloscope before sending it home with we to make sure the heads were aligned and everything. That was the tech at the day. Things have changed a little bit. We've moved up um, levels of abstraction from that, uh, right, a little bit. And we've got kind of the precarious stack now because, right, the, you know, the 10,000 NPM modules and, and all the rest of that. Uh, and that's kind of curious. I don't, I'm not sure how that's gonna play out because 
that seems to me that that's running up against the you know, security and, and verifiability kind of concerns, and they're really at loggerheads there because now we expect this level of support that, oh, there's, there's a gem for that. There's a, there's a module for that. I can just grab this set of features and shove it into my project without knowing what it really is. Mm, usually in sci-fi movies, that doesn't work out real well. Um, so we'll see. It'll be interesting, that's for sure.